Hi, welcome to the second in our series of Back to Basics for Fantastic Furniture Painting. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about donning. Last week we talked about color and coating your piece. And in order to make the transitions from one color to the next color look crisp and look clean, and also as a, a technique for a finishing border or an edge of a leg of a chair or a table, you want to use dots. So without further ado, let's talk about the simple dotting technique. I want to show you a quick clip on how to do simple dots. Here we go. First, you're going to take your brush and really load it with paint. You can see the paint is almost dripping off the brush. Lightly touch it to your surface and let the paint do the work. You'll find as you have less and less paint on your brush, you need to bear down a little bit more. Don't let your brush run out of paint. Dip it again and keep going with your dots. This takes a little practice, but I think if you keep at it, you'll find it's not difficult. And dots can be used for so many things, but we'll talk about that in a bit. This is an example of dots that crisp up an edge. Just a single row of very small dots that separate a border on a desk. These are dots used as background to create texture on a starfish. And these are dots, as you can see, on the edge of this stool, again, to create texture. I should have a close-up of that coming. Those are very tiny dots, and they're very close together. And these are pea-sized dots. Again, they're about the size of a pea, far apart on a little planter that I have outside on the deck. You can vary the size of your dots. This is a garden totem done entirely with dots, large ones, small ones, close together, far apart. It's a technique that works on everything. So let's move on to zipper dots. You can use a single row of dots to transition from one color to the other if your borders are not crisp. But a very interesting visual effect is a zipper dot. It's a series of two rows of dots that are opposed to each other in color and you'd be surprised at the visual effect that it achieves. Here we go, zipper dots. Let's say you have two colors so they are bordering one another and you want to create a clean line between those two borders. Maybe your lines are not all that straight. So we're going to create zipper dots. Once again, load your paintbrush up with a lot of paint so the paint does the work. This time we're going to paint the dots one dot apart all the way down whoops load up your paintbrush again all the way down the border where the two colors meet now ordinarily you would wait until your line of periwinkle dots dried before you start putting your chartreuse dots on but let's do this all together without hopefully without smudging the paint. Once your purple dots, your periwinkle dots have dried, you're going to do a row of the chartreuse dots. Again, letting your paint do the work, loading your paintbrush up to create a second row of dots. Zipper dots, pretty easy. Try it. Just as a visual reminder, here's the progression of zipper dots. Two colors, dot with one opposing color, and then make your second row of dots. Here's how they look on a planter, again, out on my deck. You can have more than one row of zipper dots, and you can use them in gradient colors. That's what this effect looks like on the leg of a stool. The final kind of dot we'll talk about today is called an eyeball dot. An eyeball dot is exactly what it sounds like. It's a series of three dots, one large dot, a medium-sized dot, and then a smaller dot that give the illusion of an eyeball. 
again, these can be used as a border on a table uh, to finish off a design, to crisp the transition from one color to another. Your eyeball dots can, quote, look up, down, to the right, to the left, and in those different ways, in the different ways you position them, they all achieve a different effect. So here's a short clip on eyeball dots, and I will follow that with some examples as well. I hope you're not tired of drawing dots. I want to show you another kind of dot called an eyeball dot. This dot is created just a little bit differently from the other dots. What you're going to do with this dot is use a larger brush and create a circle the size of anywhere from a dime to a nickel. Okay. You obviously would let that dry and then you would draw a second dot inside that dot, roughly two-thirds the size of that dot. And once that is dry, you would draw a third dot, and for this you can use your regular dotting technique inside that one. Those are eyeball dots. They have a variety of uses, and we will talk about that in a minute. So give these a try. Once again, here's a progression of an eyeball dot, a large dot, a medium size, and a small. And here's what they look like as they're looking down. You can see that's one effect. I use, zip, I use eyeball dots, excuse me, a lot. Um, here's how they look on the edge of a little pie crust table that was actually my great aunt's table. As you can see, I repurpose all kinds of furniture. And the next photograph is eyeballs looking up on the edge of a stool. And you can see I've also used dots on the stretchers. This is again on a table edge and the eyeballs looking down. You can see they look different everywhere every time you use them. And these are on the leg of a table, another repurposed piece from David's mother, I think. And finally, eyeball dots as a border to a paisley. So that covers several kinds of dots that you can use to crisp up your designs and create borders on table legs or uh, chair legs and so on. Next week, we'll talk about a few more techniques, how to create a simple paisley, uh, how to do a trellis. That's another good uh, background idea. And we'll talk a little bit more about color. Thank you for watching. I look forward to see, seeing you in class this week. Bye-bye.